What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another Enscape video editing tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to use the redesigned Enscape video editor in order to export rendered animations from Enscape. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. And so in order to access the video editor, you need to start by clicking on the Start Enscape button on your screen. That's going to pop up the Enscape rendering window over here. And so the Enscape rendering window is where you're going to create your videos. And so in order to do this, what you want to do, um, in order to actually get to the video editor itself, you want to click on this button right here to access the video editor. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off this help screen over here. I don't really need it for right now. All right, so that's going to pop up a window that looks like this. And so we can use this in order to create our video paths and our animations. And so the way that we're going to need to do that is we're going to need to create what's known as a keyframe. So a keyframe is basically a point in time um, inside of your video editor where your camera needs to be at that time. And notice how this tells us we need to create at least two keyframes. And so we're going to be able to manage and create keyframes down here to start off. And so to start off, let's say that we want to have a keyframe where our camera is right here. So all we need to do I just click on the plus button right here to add our first keyframe. So notice if I click on it, you get some information in here about the keyframe, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But for right now, let's add a second keyframe. So let's say that we wanted our camera to move forward like this. So something very simple. Um, what we could do to add our second keyframe is to click on the plus button right here. And so what that does, that adds a second point in space for our video. Well now, notice how the play button can now be clicked on. So if I click on this button, notice how this is going to animate my camera transition from one keyframe to the other keyframe. And so Enscape tries to do this in a very smooth way. So it's gonna give you kind of a smooth movement. And so those are our first two keyframes. You can edit both of them by clicking back and forth between the two. Notice how this gives us a keyframe one and a keyframe two. And let's say, for example, that we wanted to adjust our second keyframe so it's in a different location. All you need to do is click on that keyframe to edit it, move your camera, and then just click on the button for update. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna update your camera location, what it's pointing at, all those different things. So now, if we were to play this, notice how our second keyframe is a little bit further to the left than it was before. So we were able to move that keyframe over by clicking that update button. And so before we do anything else with keyframes, let's click on the button right here to exit our keyframes and fly around. So if I fly around inside of Enscape, notice how there's this line in here showing you the camera movement between keyframe one and keyframe two. And if I was to click on one of those cameras, notice how that takes us to that keyframe inside of our video editor. So you can look at this and you can see what the path is going to look like um, between the different cameras by exiting out of those keyframes. And so let's say that we wanted to add a keyframe along this line, right? So if we wanted to add a second keyframe, you could either click in here and then add a keyframe in the middle so you can kind of like move forward and then just click on this timeline in order to add a second keyframe. Notice how when we do that, it kind of takes us out of this a little bit, but now there's another keyframe on this line, which we can click on and edit. So you could add that that way, or you can also, let's exit out of our keyframes for a second, add a keyframe just by clicking on this line right here. So notice how this added an additional keyframe. And so now let's take a look at some of the options for our video itself. So right now, for example, and we're going to exit out of our keyframes. Right now, for example, our video has a total duration of nine seconds. So that means for our camera to fly through all of these different keyframes, it's going to create a nine second long video. So you can adjust this by going into your total duration and adjusting this up and down. So for example, if you wanted this to be slower, you could change it to something like 15 seconds like this, and then click the play button. We'll notice how your camera is going to move a lot slower than it was before. And so not only can you adjust the overall duration, you can also adjust the duration of the transition between these keyframes by clicking on one of them and checking the box for timestamp. So notice how right now, for example, the time
timestamp for this object or this camera location is two seconds. Well, let's say you wanted it to take longer to transition from this point to this point. Well, you could just come in here and you could just adjust your overall duration of that timestamp just by clicking on this right here. And so what that means, if we were to exit out of this, is overall, this is gonna be slower because you've added time for this first transition. And so you can use that to really kind of uh, customize the transitions between those different points in here. And so let's say that we wanted to adjust this so that our path was different. So let's say we wanted our path to go all the way over here. You can either create a new path or you could just come in here and you could just adjust your various keyframes and then update them. So that's keyframe two. If I go to keyframe three, I can move that over here and click on the update button. And then for keyframe four, I could do the same thing, right? Notice how I'm adjusting the movement of my camera. And then I can click the update button in order to place that. So now if I click out of exit keyframe, notice how our cameras have all been moved and updated based on what we just did. So now if I click play, my camera's gonna run this way rather than the way that we had it in here before. And so in addition, notice that you can keyframe other things as well. So first off, let's save this path. So this is something I wanna be able to access later. So let's just click up in here and let's click on save path to file. So we're just gonna save this as our video path. What that means is that means that later on, we can load that path if we want it. But for now, let's create a new path. So we're gonna click on the button for new video path. That's gonna ask us if we wanna delete the current path and we're gonna say yes, because we already saved it. So let's say now, instead of a moving camera animation, let's say that we wanted to have an animation where the time of day changes. To do that, we could click the plus button to add one keyframe and then the plus button to add another. And then for the first keyframe, let's keyframe our time of day. So let's say for this one, we wanna keyframe this at 2.17 p.m. Well then, in our second keyframe, we can set this so that our time of day is maybe like 4.09 p.m. And then we're just gonna click on the button to update now, if I run this animation, notice how I'm going to get an animation where my time changes. And the overall duration of this clip is really short. So we're going to change this so that it's a 10 second duration just by changing this value right here. Now, if I click on play, notice how the time is changing over the course of this video. So you can keyframe values like the time of day in your keyframes as well. So there, there's other options too. So um, things like your focal point or your field of view. So your field of view, for example, is going to adjust how much you can see with your camera, right? So if I was to keyframe this value in here, and I would wanna keyframe my other value as well. So for my first keyframe, I would wanna keyframe this at 90, deg at 90 degrees. Our second one, Notice that we've keyframed it at 39 degrees. Well now, if we click between these, notice how this is gonna animate the transition between the different focal points um, in these keyframes as well, or the different field of views in here as well. So you can do the same thing with focal point if you decide that you wanna do that. So you can also adjust that with your camera focal point. And so let's look at just a couple more things and then let's export our video. So, um, Let's go back, let's save this path as Inkscape video path time of day and hit enter. And then let's load our other path, which is just our original video path. So now we have this back in here, right? So one thing you can do is you can adjust this so that your movement eases in and out by checking this box. Otherwise, this is, just, this is just gonna start up at a constant speed, right? And that's kind of a stylistic thing. Some people want the camera to kind of slow down at the very beginning and at the very end to kind of ease in and out. You can check the box in order to do that. So you're gonna notice if you do that, your camera kind of slows down here at the end if you check that box. So notice how this starts slow and then it speeds up. 
That's what this option is going to do. And then the other option is going to be shaky camera. And so if you do the shaky camera, notice how your camera is going to have a little bit more up and down inside of it. Um, almost like if somebody was walking or something like that, what it does is it just adds a little bit of noise to the movement of the camera, which is good because um, sometimes it can feel like your camera movement is a little bit too smooth and so if your camera movement is too smooth it can just kind of take some of the realism out of this um, so you can use that in order to kind of adjust that depending on the style that you're going for so now let's talk about how to export our video so there's a button down here for export and if you click on it that's going to ask you for information about what exactly you want to export so you can export it to a certain level of resolution, so full HD, ultra HD, custom, um, other things like that. You can also adjust your uh, compression and the number of frames per second. Remember, when you export something um, in frames per second, the more frames you have, the smoother your animation is going to look, but the longer it's gonna take to render. So you always have to kind of balance that. Well, in this case, let's just leave it as is. Um, I'm actually going to drop it down to maybe just regular HD just for the sake of this video. We're going to click on export and that's going to ask us where we want to put this. So we're going to put this in our InScape video editor. We're going to click on save. And what that's going to do is that's going to export out your frames. So it's going to render each frame and then stitch them together into a video. So that's going to take a little bit of time depending on the level of quality that you're using. So we're going to let this work and then we'll come back and take a look at our result. So if we play this video, basically it's going to render out this clip with the effects that we had set in here. So whatever effects you have in your rendering engine, that's how this is going to get rendered inside of your animation. You can see how this is a really fast way to create this rendering. I will note that the more effects you're using and the more complex your scene is, the longer this is going to take. But overall, exporting this animation was actually really fast coming out of Enscape. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Have you tried this new video editor? What do you think? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.